And while a Scott's wildebeest are indecisive about whether or not they should hop in the Mara River, we'll keep you entertained with the Angama lion cubs. Well, they are relatively far away. They're on the opposite side of a massive dried-up river system, their favorite place. Oh. But with all the grass having been eaten, we've got a perfect view. And I did actually see two of the youngest ones a little bit youngest ones a little bit earlier trotting past and uh, you'll be happy to know all of the cubs that i've seen so far could not look fatter or happier their bellies are positively scraping on the floor our paul and for all of our new viewers who are perhaps new to this particular pride you want to know how many members of this pride there are there are let me just think for a second i've just done this so let me get it right there are four lionesses, adult lionesses, there are seven older cubs, five, six-ish months around there, maybe a little bit older, maybe a bit younger, and there's three, three and a half months or four, four month old cubs, and then there's three little, little ones who are just over two months now. So that, that makes 13 cubs and four lionesses. And I can tell you that numbers like that mean that the migration could not have arrived at a better time for this particular pride of lions. It means that their cubs have been really well fed. And in the beginning, we spent a huge amount of time following the lionesses of the Angama pride before the wildebeest arrived here. And and they were, they were hunting almost constantly all through the night to try and keep their family fed. And I've just noticed there's about three wildebeest carcasses around us. So they've been doing very, very well. And as it happens, luck of the draw at the moment, the wildebeest aren't here right now. But there's a very good chance if it rains a little bit, they'll be back once again to the foot of, well, to the foot of the escarpment. The little ones, the tiny little ones, I only saw two, but they've ducked off to the right into the, the drainage line. Well, what I think I'm going to do is just go forward a bit to where some more vehicles are parked and just go see if we can catch up with the rest of the pride. They seem to be on the side of the road. So let's go see if we can get a closer view of them up ahead. Might even be there's a male with them. I don't know yet. Let's go and find out. Goodbye, ladies. It's nice to catch up with them again. I haven't seen them in days. Let's just have a look. Michael, I haven't done a, a, a proper count yet in terms of how many of the cubs are males and females. I can tell you that there's at least two male cubs uh, from the older group, but beyond that I'm not 100% sure. I haven't spent a lot of time with them recently. So once we get a view of all of them all together and they conveniently turn to face us, then we'll be able to guess, not guess, we'll be able to work out exactly what the, the breakdown is between males and females. And it's something that we're always fascinated with because provided the cubs survive, and chances are not all of them will, but provided the cubs all survive, you've got a really nice idea of what the future holds for them because once they reach a certain age, if they're male cubs, they're gonna move off on their own. If they've got the advantage of having siblings or cousins, it's really going to help them in the future. Aha! I suspected this was what we were going to find. And if, it's, if you know how many female cubs you've got, then you know just how much that pride is going to grow once those females reach adulthood and how much of an advantage that will be. Hello, little monsters! Oh, I'm glad we came here, Dave. So we've got the three middle cubs and two lionesses by the looks of things, scraping away at the remains of a rib cage. <laughs> oh, we've got four little ones. Oh, good. That means that the third tiniest cub has survived. For those of you keeping track, you kind of need a, a notebook and a pencil for this. But it means all six of the youngest cubs are still alive. Hmm, yum. What are we feasting on? I'm gonna guess wildebeest, Dave. What do you think? I'm gonna go wildebeest. Although, nah, wildebeest. 
<laughs> Hello, little ones. Yes, grab that tail. Get the tail. It's actually really lovely to catch up with them. They have grown a lot since I last saw these cubs. Those fierce claws of the one on the right. <laughs> it's tough work getting through the skin, isn't it? But already at a, this young age, already fully equipped weapons-wise, sharp, strong claws, still got his baby teeth, but they'll do. They're sharp enough. So I suspect that the two lionesses we have here, we saw the third one, and I suspect that the fourth one is off where the little cubs disappeared off to. Is that a second kill at the back there, Dave? Um, there, behind. Yes, it is. Carnage. The carnage of the migration. No wonder those cubs were looking so fat and we've only got half the pride. It's because they've already killed at least two wildebeest that we know of last night. Those other kills were slightly older. What a time to be a lion in the Maasai Mara, where food basically walks into your mouths. The other night when we were sitting in that in that wildebeest chaos, I watched that male lion take out mm, seven wildebeest before I got distracted with trying to get us out of there. It was absolutely crazy. Oh, are you talking? Can you hear that, Dave? Mm. Oh, I missed that sound. <laughs> That's brave. Facing those teeth. Now, while we watch this, our Lara Moore, you want to know if we're seeing an increase in kills while the cubs mature, perhaps. I would say we're seeing an increase in kills because there's there's more to see and there's more to catch. Um, the lions are really just, they, when they hunt a herd of wildebeest, they are killing, on average, about two or three, probably even more. So we're seeing an increase in kills purely because there's an increase in number of prey. But as the cubs get older, yes, the, in, the number of hunts initiated by the lionesses do increase because there's just, quite simply, there's just more mouths to feed. And the cubs are getting bigger, therefore they're eating more, and therefore the lionesses actually have to keep moving in order to keep them fed. And I always think that lionesses who have essentially teenage cubs, around about a year old, I always think they have to work the hardest of all lions, at least in the sense of, of hunting, because they've got to provide for those youngsters, and at the same time, they've, the, the one-year-old cubs tend to mess up the hunt on a regular basis, so they've got to counteract that as well. Oh, Could you get more precious? <laughs> well done, ladies. See the one, see the notch above her left ear? That's the mother of the second youngest cubs. There you go, you can see it clearly. So she's the mother of the three and a half month old cubs, this lot that are coming to cuddle with her. Easily identifiable. Right, we've distracted you long enough with a playful, adorable lion cubs. Let's go and see if the wildebeest have made a decision yet.